Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. We start on the daily time frame. Bitcoin has actually already put in that one more low that we wanted to see here on the daily chart. Um, it is, um, it, it looks already complete on the daily now, right? It looks already complete, even though it could get a few more downside squiggles to round about 55,400 to 56,200 roughly. There's a bit of a, a small target area down there, at least the next Fibonacci levels. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much, I'd say here on the daily, it's pretty much going according to plan. Um, it would have been ideal to form the fifth wave in, let's say, more of a clear three wave move, but we're going to take a look at that sort of detailed, more fragile wave count on the one hour chart, obviously, the smaller time frame wave counts and scenarios, they are fragile, require frequent adjustment. That's just because of the higher volatility, right, in the crypto sector. And it's li it's like, if you have trend lines on the one hour chart, naturally, for example, they break more frequently than on the daily chart, right? Also, Elliott wave counts require more adjustment on the one hour chart than on the daily chart. But really, the, the direction, the direction is the same. And we were still watching <clears throat> still watching follow-up prices and um, it's however going down a little bit more direct than I thought um, because obviously today in the US is holiday right it's a public holiday 4th of July so I didn't actually expect um, a direct decline but maybe that's a good thing maybe it's a good thing because we might see that sort of fifth wave here in a very direct fashion to be completed but be careful right be careful I'm watching for a reversal, of course. That doesn't mean it has to happen. I always go with what the market tells me. At the moment, the trend is still down. However, looking at the indicators, the daily RSI is oversold again, as it was here. And as I mentioned to you before, whenever we had the daily RSI oversold, it is typically a good buy signal. It doesn't happen very often. The last time that happened was here. In August 2023, we had a similar situation where we also were oversold. Okay, the market couldn't really recover, but it was still a substantial rally um, from the oversold reading all the way up here to from, from 26k roughly to 28k. But then it put a bullish divergence in. It took a while, right? It took a while, but put a bullish divergence in and then really went. I mean, not saying, right, we have an oversold reading and it goes directly. It could spend a bit of time in this support area still. Um, but as I said before, for me, really, it's the $50,700 level that is relevant. Below that level, I will get increasingly cautious and the risk increases that the overall bull market will at least get delayed, get a substantial delay. Um, but also here, oversold in March 2023, really good um, buy signal. Oversold back here in November 22, really good buy signal. And also here, really good buy signal in June 22, right? Yes, we made another low afterwards, but look at that rally, okay? So again, even, even if a, assuming, okay, maybe a bear market started or whatever, even here, I mean, even uh, when we were oversold on this, um, again, I'm not saying the bear market started, but you know, anything is possible, not probable until we break support. But here, even here in the decline, that was in January 22, when we hadn't even reached bear market lows uh, back then, the oversold reading yeah, led to a substantial rally. So again, not saying it doesn't happen, you know, every time, but still, I mean, we are way above the price um, when we had the last oversold reading that is typically quite bullish, okay? But the structure always needs to confirm that. So this is only an indicator. It's only an indicator, it's not confirmation, okay? So nevertheless, I'm using that to accumulate myself a little bit carefully until we have a clear low in place. So that's not, that's not the same like, okay, I go all in with a massive futures trade and leverage long, that's not the same. It's careful accumulation with very wise position sizing and knowing that we could still drop further and getting a good average price in that orange support region. Okay, that's sort of what I do. And we have now reached the area of the previous low, possible that we get some support there. Um, we've entered the white target zone again 
And from here, yeah, I'm watching, I'm watching for a reaction, right? I'm watching for a reaction, but we'll take a look at that on the smaller time frame. Let's go to the one hour chart. Here we see this decline. First of all, we zoom out a little bit. The third wave topped obviously in March. We had this A wave down, B wave rally and the C wave down. It's a five wave decline. So you can already see five waves. One, two, three, four, five. Now, this is where ideally the fifth wave would also get us an ABC structure. I showed it to you yesterday, logged into our Discord um, that silver and gold members can access. And I showed you the pattern of an ending diagonal because we have the patterns there explained, Elliott wave patterns. And I showed you ideally we get an ABC structure. Now that B wave is technically still outstanding. Now it is always possible if this fifth wave extends a lot that the AB is somewhere hidden in here. I, I, I won't be able to recognize that until later. It's just not, we, if we don't get a nice bounce in a B wave, it's not possible to say, um, okay, you know, maybe this is an ABC. I mean, remember I highlighted down here, that was yesterday, that the A wave technically could be complete. I mean, maybe this was the B wave and maybe we do the C in one go. I just wanna highlight that, right? Um, but that's something, where, you know, I have to say, okay, look, at some point, you know, this is all interpretation to a degree and we can only be prepared for that, but it would be that wave count would reside on the, let's say, it would reside on a very, very uh, unreliable and shallow B wave, okay? So it's possible the B wave might have, and we might now be in the C wave and we might be close to completing this. I mean. The idea was we get into this region, right, between 55,460 and 56,200. Um, and ideally, I'd like to have I'd like to have seen a B wave already. Well, maybe that was it. It was just shallow. We'll see. We'll see where it takes us. Um, for now, until and it's very simple, until I see a five wave rally followed by a three wave pullback, there is no confirmed low in place. So it's very important. Um, the current resistance area is defined between. Let me just adjust that if needed. It's between 59,588 and 62,320. Uh, I will adjust that throughout the day if we decline further. Um, if we want to stay up to date, um, we do cover regularly Bitcoin on the uh, on the X network on our Twitter channel. So make sure you follow that here as well. If you're interested in additional updates, uh, you can find the link in the description. This is our handle here. Just make sure you only follow the one with the blue check mark. But also here, 18 hours ago, I highlighted specifically what I just mentioned, um, that the A wave could have completed, right? We had three waves down. So I highlight that, yeah, we can already identify three full waves in wave A. And I gave you a resistance area and said, look, as long as we stay below resistance, I'm watching for that C wave down, which is why I think maybe was the B wave just extremely shallow, right? And I even said it's possible that the B wave is unfolding now, but it was just extremely shallow then. It didn't get that, it didn't get that normal B wave look. So just, you know, I've seen that before. Sometimes crypto is just producing very shallow B waves, but it's just not reliable. That's the, that's the thing. Um, and then that's, this is where context comes into play. Yeah, where we can say, okay, we still have to be watching for a B wave if we now get a bounce and resistance is defined. Um, but we've now made a new low. So the probabilities for a direct uh, turnaround, yeah, especially considering the RSI, they've increased. But this is speculation until the market confirms it. So I think it's still time. It's too early to be bullish, but it's time to be watching for a reversal now that we've made that new low, right? This is now obviously that we've made that additional low. It's now um, the first time that we can say, okay, we now actually have a full wave count to the downside. Surely, ideally we get a BC, um, but we've now basically entered the larger target area. Again, still a little bit lower would be ideal, but we've made a new low and the wave pattern is technically full. It would look better though with a BC. Yeah, and below 50,700, you know that uh, something more bearish is likely playing out, but we will have to see how the market reacts to these all these pivots before. That's my update about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.